Hey there, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com with what should hopefully be a short but interesting little video repairing a more modern piece of gear, the Tom Oberheim SEM Pro. So the problem that the customer sent this in for was the uh, envelope 1 seems to be getting stuck on randomly. So playing via MIDI, uh, occasionally notes will get stuck on and you play the next note and it'll get turned off. So what I've done here is I've connected a little keyboard and I'm running in uh, CV and gate and I'm looking at the envelope. Envelope 1 out is coming to my oscilloscope here and we'll watch the gate light here on the keyboard on the uh, SEM and we'll play some notes. <laughs> So we see that that gate light was off, but the envelope was stuck on. And we know that the gate is good because we're taking it directly from this external controller, not using the MIDI interface. So we have a problem with envelope 1 on the SEM. So the customer had been controlling this only through MIDI, and I'm controlling it through gate and CV. And one other problem that I'm noticing, and I'll, I may have to hit the keys a few times to reproduce it, is sometimes I'll press a key and the uh, gate light will trigger here, but the envelope won't actually trigger. There. See? The light turned on here when I pressed a key, but no envelope showed up on the scope. So let's open up this SEM and see what's inside and try to fix it. So this is the inside of the SEM Pro. It's very neatly laid out. So this is the MIDI to CV converter module that is attached to the panel there. We've got this uh, output jack board and then a little circuit board here for the uh, uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks and kind of a uh, interconnect board here mounted on the back. We've got the main SEM board here, and I'll swing around to the other side so we can see it right side up. And it's very neatly laid out. Taking a peek at the envelope generators here, we can see that, uh, that there's uh, less discrete transistors than the original. Probably my eyesight's not so good, I'll have to take a closer look, but probably that we're, what we're looking at here are some transistor arrays. Uh, so the board's laid out pretty similar to the original. We've got the two oscillators up here, VCO1, VCO2. We've got the LFO. We've got the VCF and the VCA. Envelope control chip here. Uh, and then the envelopes themselves. Uh, power regulation here. So the thing that concerns me is that there is an envelope control section here, which is not on the original SEM. And uh, I'll have to take a look at what this chip is. It might be a microcontroller. I'll we'll have to take a look. Yeah, in fact, this is a microcontroller. It's a uh, Texas Instruments MSP430 mixed signal microprocessor. And then there is a uh, this little uh, thing in the transistor package, the TO92 package. It's not a transistor. It's actually a 3.3 volt regulator. That's why it's got a U23 designator, which is not the designator for an IC chip and not a transistor. So this is not purely analog on the SEM module itself. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to find out where the gate comes in to envelope 1 and we're going to see if we're really getting that gate there the times where uh, we're not hearing the envelope being triggered or where the envelope is being stuck on. Because the problem could be with this custom microprocessor. So we'll isolate the problem between the envelope and the, this digital envelope control section. And I don't have a schematic or uh, any kind of service information for, for the SEM Pro, so I don't know what this envelope control does, so we're just going to have to wing it. Also, it looks like I was wrong about those chips in the envelope generators being transistor arrays. Those are CD 4066 chips, so they're CMOS analog switches. And there's a there's an op amp there as well. 
So this is not the same schematic as the original SEM envelope generator. So before we dive into deep troubleshooting, there's one more thing we can check here on the panel. Um, some more information we can kind of milk out of this to try to narrow down whether the problem is envelope control or envelope one. And that's by moving the gate over to envelope two and monitoring envelope two on the oscilloscope, which is what I've done now. If the problem is present on envelope two, then almost certainly the problems with that envelope control section. I think if the problem uh, doesn't show up on envelope two, I don't know that we can rule out envelope control because I don't know exactly what it does, but at least it'll give us kind of a, a more educated guess of where we need to start. So let's, uh, so I'm hitting some keys here, I'll switch hands with the camera. And so far it looks good. I'll move it back over to envelope one. Yep. So uh, it looks like it might be with the problem. The might, problem might be with envelope one. So let's uh, take a closer look at what's going on in the redesigned SEM envelopes. So on envelope two, I'm able to probe the analog switches here. Let's uh, find a pin that, that does something here, uh, this one here. So when I gate a note, you can see that that toggles between 15 volts when the key is on, zero volts when it's off. So there's input lines and there's control lines to these analog chips. And what I've done is I've run through all of those on envelope two to see what they're, which ones are toggling when I press keys. And now if I hop over to envelope one, we'll look at the same, the same one, this pin two here. And you see that that, that stays stuck on when uh, this problem manifests itself. So I figured if the problem is going to be with one of these analog switches, I would find a pin where the problem doesn't manifest itself. And then basically from that point on, uh, I would have located the problem. The issue is all of the pins uh, where there's a toggling when you, you gate a note, all of those pins show the problem on these, these analog switches. So I'm thinking that actually the, uh, the gate coming into the envelopes is uh, different between envelope one and envelope two and at some point it's branching off here in this envelope control section. So I'm going to probe that area and see if I can find gate, uh, the gate for envelope one and the gate for envelope two. This guy hears the Oberheim repair going on and wants to check things out. Just outside the window here. Red-tailed hawk. Again, I apologize that we're looking at things upside down, but uh, so after this microcontroller, it looks like there's this chip here, which is a 4504, a, uh, a hex a level shifter. So I can see that there's six traces running off here down towards the envelopes. It looks like three might come to envelope one, probably the other three to envelope two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the pinout of this uh, this chip and I'm going to see if I can map the outputs of this to the inputs of of these chips so we can figure out which pins on here are for uh, envelope one and which are for envelope two and here I'm connected straight to this microcontroller and we can see that when the note sticks we are seeing it sticking on the output of this microcontroller. So it turns out it's a digital problem and um, since we don't know what this microcontroller does, uh, it's programmed with um, firmware that uh, presumably uh, is, is protected on the chip and we can't see. Um, typically this is where uh, we'd, we'd stop and say that we can't repair it. Uh, however, I hear that Tom Oberheim is a really really cool dude. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to put this on hold and I'm going to try to contact him and see uh, what, what what suggestions or, or um, what help he can offer on this problem. So it's a little while later. I emailed the legend himself, Tom Oberheim, and told him what I was seeing and asked if there was anywhere I could buy one of these programmed microcontrollers. He agreed with my findings and not only sent me a new chip, but he even sent a socket to mount the chip into. What a true gentleman! So let's install this and confirm that it fixes the problem. So here I've taken the two boards apart and from here I can access the back side of that through hole IC chip. And sure enough, with the new chip installed, envelope one is now working correctly. So it's all closed up and I verified that both envelope one and envelope two are working. We're working through the uh, patch cord interface and the MIDI to CV interface. And I have to say I was blown away by Tom Oberheim's service and generosity here. I doubt you'd find any other synthesizer manufacturer in the world who would stand by their product like that and send out a pre-programmed chip. Usually when a chip fails like it did in this one, your only option is to buy a new board from the manufacturer, and that often costs more than the instrument is worth. These new Tom Oberheim SEMs are a quality, well-designed, well-built product. There are some differences with the original, but it's true the original design and the parts that really matter. There's a bunch of modern features to, for it to play well with your other gear, and it's made by an awesome guy. I'm not trying to make an ad for, for this synthesizer, but with the original SEMs getting harder to find these days, it's nice to know that this is a good substitute for the vintage gear. This has been SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. Thank you, Mr. Oberheim, and thank you all for watching. Have a great day.